Motor Week, television's automotive magazine, with your host, John Davis. Hello and welcome to Motor Week. I'm glad you're with us. This is the 1983 Ford Thunderbird, a car that's gotten more advanced publicity than David O. Selznick's search for Scarlett O'Hara. Spy photos of the Thunderbird surfaced over two years ago, and even then it looked like a dramatic new direction in Detroit styling. Production was originally scheduled for fall 82, and handmade prototypes greeted the motoring press in June of last year. But Ford wanted to get this bird right before it flew the coop, so production was delayed. And in the meantime, car magazines couldn't print their premature road test fast enough. So a lot of people were more than a little miffed that not one dealer had any steeled wings to sell. But all that attention did prompt tens of thousands of orders for a car that so far was all hype. Good news for Ford, of course. That assured the new T-Bird of at least initial success. But guess what? Now you can actually go out and buy one. The next question is, was all that roaring thunder really worth it? Well, let's slip under its feathers and see. We got our first flight at Ford's Dearborn, Michigan test track. This ride and handling course is a series of constant radius turns designed to test the limits of a car's suspension in normal use. It was clear from the start that this new Thunderbird and its Mercury Cougar cousin are a lot more than just slick sheet metal, even in standard trim. With gas-filled shock absorbers and a chassis four inches shorter than last year, this rear-drive personal luxury car is a far cry from the wallowing coupes of the last 25 years. Ads that tell us, shaped by the wind to soar in style, aren't just kidding. Extensive testing at the Lockheed Georgia wind tunnel has produced a six-foot-wide rounded wedge that has a coefficient of drag of only 0.35. That's 17% better than the old boxy predecessors. And this Thunderbird uses less horsepower to cruise at 50 miles per hour than any domestic competitor. Not much chrome here either. You'll find most of it in the deeply tunneled halogen headlights and the traditional T-Bird egg crate grille. It also makes up most of the car's straight lines. Styling otherwise is a series of gentle curves that flow up and over a 60-degree raked windshield, down an even faster backlight, and off a trunk that contains just the hint of a spoiler. In your rearview mirror, an approaching T-Bird might remind you of a chubby-cheeked hamster. That look will be cleaned up even further when Ford adopts flush-mounted headlights. Styling and efficiency also meet smartly at the two wide doors. Portals curve nicely into the roof. That not only allows more entry headroom, but hides the rain gutter channels. No more drip rails to cause drag. The overall effect is one of style and grace. That puts the Thunderbird in a new class of sleekness and gives you an idea of what all upcoming Ford products will look like in the foreseeable future. By now, you've probably decided to either love or hate the 1983 Thunderbird styling. But on the inside, things are a lot less radical. It's all very European in fabric and design. That is except for the wide wood tone dash strip carried over from last year's car. It doesn't look as expensive as everything else, plus it's squeaked. The instrument cluster contains a Tron-like grid, but that doesn't hide the fact that the only gauge you get is for fuel. The optional electronic cluster is no better. However, while the occupant's eyes can see little except the sharply sloping hood, their bottoms can be settled into the optional articulated bucket seats. That's a fancy way of saying they're fully adjustable. Not only do they fully recline, but you also get tailor-made under thigh support and an inflatable lower back lumbar cushion. Nestled between the seats is a downward shaped console that can house window, seat and mirror control. Back seaters find a central console mounted ashtray and an environment that is more roomy than it looks. Head, leg and knee room is quite satisfactory for a pair of six foot adults, if just barely so. The expensive look continues in the trunk. Everything is covered in carpet to ensure a soft journey for a lot of luggage. Rounding out the interior cavities of the T-Bird, they are almost as well designed as the outside. But while the new bird looks great sitting still, it's time to return to the real world of our test track to measure its moving livability. Base price for the 83 Thunderbird is $9,200. 
Our 3,450-pound test car, with a bevy of options, totaled 13340 Of that, $288 was charged for the 5-liter V8 and $152 for the special handling package and Goodyear Eagle HR tires. All of those handling components and more are found on the high-performance Turbo Thunderbird. They help the already competent strut coil spring suspension make easy work of our handling course. Slight understeer accompanied flat cornering. Both mesh nicely with a very fast 2.5 turns lock-to-lock -lock power rack and pinion steering unit. As you'd expect, reaction time of the suspension slowed as speed increased under the nose-heavy weight of the V8. Yet even under these conditions, we were surprised at how well balanced this suburban hot rod was. The rear end would hang out around a curve, but only to a point. The long travel springs and the shocks and tires would then take over to keep the bird solidly earthbound. Brakes were a matter of where you were sitting. If you're in front of a rushing Thunderbird, you'll be thankful of the short, secure stopping distance of only 108 feet from 55 miles per hour. Pedal pressure was reasonable and there was no pull, little lock, and acceptable fade. But from behind, things looked a lot more scary. Like other Ford rear-drive cars, the light tail soars high in the air. The rear wheels hop wildly. Yet to the credit of the car, the back end stays mostly straight. While the baseline 3.8 liter 112 horsepower V6 will give you adequate performance, our car's 130 horsepower fuel-injected eight-cylinder fits the bird's thunder image better. From a standing start of 500 foot on-ramp time of 9.9 .9 seconds at 57 is very good. The wide power band attached to a quick shifting four-speed overdrive automatic also produced a healthy quarter mile dash of 18.3 seconds at 83. In fact, all our acceleration tests produced above average performance. From zero to 60, a scant 10.8 seconds. And you'll love to know that passing any obstacle should mean only four and a half seconds in the wrong lane. About the only thing that might bother you about the T-Bird's everyday performance is mileage. Although the EPA rates the V8 at 17 city, 28 highway, a well broken in car will yield about 21 the V6 should do about 10% better. The 1983 Thunderbird is a striking car from almost any angle. It has oomph and style without overkill. And despite all the media fuss, makes the once again strong image of the Thunderbird well worth living up to.